Praise the Lord, Pastor James T. Elam Jr. here at Dunamis Christian Center. We're so honored and so blessed that you're tuning in this morning. Something good is about to happen to you. What I've been talking about is releasing the power of dunamis while preaching the gospel of grace. Dunamis means miracle working power. It is, it's like dynamite. It will change and rearrange things in your life. The power of God is able to bring you out of anything, any situation that you face. But the power is released through the gospel. The good news, the nearly too good to be true news. So today, we're going to release this good news so you can apply it to your life. And I'm telling you, grace is Jesus. And once Jesus comes in your life, he wants to help you more than you want to be helped. Watch this, and I know it will bless you. releasing the power of dunamis while preaching the gospel of grace. This is so very vital because in, in Romans 1, it says this, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. What this is talking about is that if you want the power of God to be released, it's in the gospel. It says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That means the good news, the nearly too good to be true, good news of Christ. This word Christ, when it says good news of the gospel of Christ, it also means the grace of Christ. That's what it says in Galatians 1, 6, the grace of Christ. So in other words, we can talk a lot, we can say it like this, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the grace of Christ or the gospel of grace, or, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto your healing, unto your deliverance, unto your forgiveness, unto your born again, unto your wholeness. All those things, that's what salvation means here, to everyone that believeth. So in other words, what Paul was introducing, a new way to receive the power of God in your life. And he says here, to those that believe. This is very important because in the, before the cross, people didn't receive from God, but by believing, by believing. They didn't receive by believing. They received by doing works, doing the law, keeping the commandments, performances, doing things right. And so he's saying here, it is first to the Jew first and to the Greek. In other words, the Jew first means before the law. All the Jews was under the law. And so they received the power of God as they were perfect. If they were not perfect, they had to kill an animal. The animal of that blood would cover their sins for the next year. But then it says also the Greek. The Greek means Gentiles. Greek Gentiles means everybody that's not a Jew. Everybody in here who, if you're not a Jew, you are Gentiles. Well, there are difference between the Jew and the Gentile. We got to understand the difference between the law and grace. We got to understand the difference between before the cross and after the cross. Gentiles is after the cross. So now, uh, what we need to do is sometimes find out what was happening, what were some of the thing, benefits that happened before the cross, and what benefits that we're supposed to walk in after the cross. Because sometimes things that were before the cross is not applicable for today for us. It's like having an uh, eight track riding around in your car today, an eight track with Superfly on there. Or the Dales, or the Dale Phonics. <laughs> or the Stylistics. Ain't nobody riding around listening to the Stylistics now? Well, it's like that with us. Sometimes we'll, we're, it is obsolete. We need to make sure under the New Covenant, what's ours and what we need to renew our mind to because it's important because you can be in church all your life, love God, go to heaven one day, and then when you get to heaven, find out everything you didn't get on the earth. Why? Because you was, you didn't understand the difference between before the cross and after the cross, and so you got saved, but they didn't get any benefits on the earth. The power of God can show you nothing because we don't, we, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't read the Bible with the lens of grace. And so I'm just taking my time. I'm not trying to get a 10 on my sermon. I'm not trying to be prophet tutu. I'm not trying. 
I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm just, I'm just going to read the Bible and show us so we can renew our mind. If a doctor go to school, he reads and, and studies and, and gets some. If a lawyer go, he gets some. Church folk want to just come and holler and you run around and fall out and mess up the carpet and don't learn nothing. And say, so I've been to church. No, 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 no. Can you read? So I want to, I want to get this into you today. Amen. Praise God, sweet love. Somebody said, what's going on with him? I am, I have been with Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Amen. It's a serious time. 23 years, we no longer teenagers around here. 23 years, you grown now. Some things God put up with, you know, we was two, teenagers, you know, baby, you know, five years old, six years old, ten years old. You ain't even a teenager yet. But now, he want us to get, put the baby, what if you ride around and all of a sudden got the car and your 23-year-old child, you lift him up and took him in the store? <laughs> Everybody says, something's wrong. Yeah, put, the, put, the, put, the, put them down and let them walk. And so that's why we're learning things and we're going through, we're going to the next level. Are y'all ready to get into this? I want to be just a little bit, but um, I'm important, man, because, um, man, I got to preach, man, because next two weeks I'm off. Mm. Man, I'm off next week, and then the week after that, I got my friend, Bishop Darren Gay, coming here. Man, y'all don't want to miss that. We'll be on vacation, but uh, y'all going gonna to be blessed. Amen. Bishop, give God a praise for Bishop Darren Gay coming. <laughs> Judas Shaw coming. Things happening, man, in, in the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. But, but how many ready? Let's find out the Holy Spirit. Uh, before the cross, what was the Holy Spirit's job before the cross? Is it the same today? Let's find out. Look at Psalms. I'm just going right to it. Look at Psalms. Amen. Because I, I want everybody to understand something who go to this church. I bet not ever hear you say this. In your life. I'm going to slap your weave off you if I hear you say this. Somebody said what, Pastor? Mm-hmm. Come on. Psalms 51 in verse 7. This is, somebody said before the cross. Here's David. Now read, look at this. He said, purge me, verse 7, um, 51 and 7 says, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make thy ear joy with gladness. And then look at verse 10. Uh, what, no, verse, verse uh, 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Look what it says. Creating me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast not away thy from thy presence. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Before the cross, you could lose the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit won't end people. He came on people. Amen. So before the cross, it's possible that you could have did something and the Holy Spirit will leave you. He was begging, don't take him. David messed up. He said, please don't take the Holy Spirit. He said, creating me a clean heart. But that was before the cross. You can't go to God and say, Lord, creating me a clean heart. God said, in heaven, like, who are you talking to? Because <laughs> when you believed on Jesus, you're a new creature. You, you, your, your heart was created in righteousness. In other words, you already have a new spirit in you and you're born again so you don't have to create a new that was old covenant so we got to understand that because very we'll, we'll say we think we're saying something creating me a clean heart you know you messed up you're like lord created me a clean no i'm just saying don't say that under the new covenant because that was before the cross david was before the cross something happened after the cross Lord have mercy, Jesus. What happened after the cross? Okay, praise God. Come on over here. Amen to 2 Corinthians 2. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 2. I love this. This is some things you need to know if you want the power of God because ignorance, there's a price for ignorance. Not knowing what you're talking about, praying all wrong, and then all of a sudden you, you're then sitting there looking crazy like you want to work with God. Where is God in your life? I'm trying to tell you he's not. He can't. His hands is t are tied sometimes because we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know the difference between before the cross and after the cross. Now, somebody say after the cross. That means after Jesus died and rose up, the Holy Spirit's job was different. Look what it says here in 2 
2 Corinthians 1 and 21, now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Somebody say, I'm anointed by God. And it's like there was anointing under the old covenant, but there's a difference now. Look at verse 22, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Lord have mercy. So under this covenant, the Holy Spirit not going nowhere because you've been sealed. And given the earnest of the Spirit. Well, look what it says in the Amplified Bible. It says, he has also, verse 22, appropriated and acknowledged us uh, as by his putting his seal upon us and giving us the, his Holy Spirit in our hearts as a security deposit, a guarantee of the fulfillment of his promise. The Holy Spirit is in you and I as a security deposit. Lord have mercy. In other words, a down payment, a guarantee of his coming back. The Holy Spirit now is in you. So when you messed up and then you like going to, Lord, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, forget not. God you know, say, who are you talking about? That's old covenant. I need you to know I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I went with you when you messed up. Amen. 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 I, everywhere you go, the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit, mercy, and grace. The Holy Spirit, mercy, and grace. I said the Holy Spirit, mercy, and grace is with us everywhere under this new covenant. But Jeff, stand up for a sec. I mean, stand up for, stand up for a sec. Y'all come, y'all come um, yet and follow me for a minute. Holy Spirit, mercy, and grace. That means wherever I go, y'all go. Just walk. I'm going, I'm going to the club. I got off. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to go do my thing. For, where's mercy and grace? Where's the Holy Spirit, mercy, and grace? They, under this cover, they ain't going nowhere. Somebody say, oh, you know, oh, Lord, Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm going far away. Wherever you go, they gone. He in me, and mercy and grace, it's like goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. You got to understand that because if you don't know that, you, the devil gets you to a point where you start condemning yourself. You get to a point where you think that, well, you know, you know, I, I must be going through something today based on what I've done and he left me. He don't love me. I have to hide because I well, haven't been perfect. But wherever I go, they go. Y'all remember that movie? Yeah. Um, don't do What's that? What's that man? Come and get the sucker? And they was playing that music, you know, and you know, and everywhere they were just had their own band. Wherever you go, they go. So if you go to the crack house, amen. And you said, well, I know they're not with me. Well, they, they can't go nowhere. They're in there smoking too. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, wait a minute, you mean to tell me they don't stay on the outside? No, 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 because they're the one convicting you. They're the one that, that's helping you. They're the one that's going to encourage you. They're the one that's going to, people will leave you, criticize you, give up on you, but they're the only one that has been assigned. I ain't going nowhere. I don't care what you do, where you go, I got you. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So how you know? I, I know, man, because I had one of my best friends, he, he was on, on, on drugs, got off, got delivered and then went back. Mm -hmm. How many know sometimes you can go back? Amen. Amen. But then when he went back, they was all in the house. Y'all follow me? <laughs> they was all in the house. Y'all gotta stop where I stopped too. <laughs> smoking, it was like, it went over there and all the boys were smoking drugs, you know, crack. What is it, crack, they smoke, or weed, what is it? Amen. It wasn't weed, it was it's cocaine. Smoking yeah, y'all yeah, yeah, smoking all that. And then all of a sudden he was saved, feeling, they don't like to get, they didn't like to get high with him because he just stopped preaching when he get high. Some of y'all not good people to get high with. <laughs> and so he just, he just kept, you know, getting high and everything. And then he heard something the Lord said. The Lord said? Right, Wait a minute. The Lord said? The Lord said, get out now. Jesus. The Lord said, get out now. This is a true story. Get out now. And he heard that. He said, get out now? But I'm getting high. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you know, he just paid no attention. And then the Lord didn't leave him alone because he'll never leave you, never forsake you. 
He told him, get out now. He said, he just thought, man, I don't, he just threw the weed down and said, hey, I mean, not the weed, but whatever it was. <laughs> and just went and left. Figure out, he's ain't gonna get high no more. No, I'll see y'all later, man. I'm going, man. I'm going on home. Got home. Soon as he got home, found out people came in with masks on and killed everybody in the house. <laughs> and he was like, why didn't that happen to me? I said, because she'll never leave you. In the midst of our wrong, he's still talking to you. You made a covenant with him, and he made a covenant with you in good times and bad times and sickness and in health. I don't care what. If you get out, I got to be there with you because I'm telling you, I'm in covenant. Man may forget the covenant, but I won't forget the covenant. I got to be with you. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. I will not. I will not. And I'm telling you right now, in the midst of your trouble, I'm there telling you, get out now. And I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit is talking to some of y'all right now. Amen. He's with you during the, during the week when you ain't doing right. He want me to tell you now, get out now. Oh, don't wait till something happens. Get out now. The Holy Spirit is not condemning you. The Holy Spirit is convicting you. The Holy Spirit is telling you, this is not right. But my mercy is there, but I need, I'm, I'm holding back the enemy. Get out now. So if we was under the old covenant before the cross, the moment you missed it, he would leave you. But now he don't leave you because Jesus paid the price for sin. You can go before his presence because of Jesus. You're behind the veil because of Jesus. And because of Jesus, goodness and mercy, grace, None of that leaves you, the Holy Spirit. Say amen to that. Amen. That's all I got. Thank you, man. Give Holy Spirit grace, mercy. Now, can you imagine wherever you experience and whatever you do, he's with me. That's why you can't judge somebody on um, three years ago experience. Amen. They might have went through that, but they're not even there no more. Yeah. God done work with them, done work with them. They back in, they're in a better place, and you still remember what they did five years ago. Yeah. We keep people in their past when God's trying to keep people in their future. Yeah. If somebody missed it, yeah, but God, you don't know what God did to that person, what relationship they don't want, they work better. You know, the Holy Spirit didn't ever leave them. You might have left them. Because people will leave you when they can't figure out what's going on. Amen. But Holy Spirit won't, he won't ever leave you. Amen. I'm just so glad that they under this covenant, no matter where you are, you got to understand, wait a minute. I, and I'll tell you, I tell, I, oh, it's coming up. It's coming up. Somebody in here got the Holy Spirit, but you got a little issue with weed. I feel this anointing in this area right here, weed. <laughs> Somebody said, you could be saved and got some weed issues, yeah? Because you're saved on the inside, but your flesh, you know, you don't know what people went through, but you're smoking weed, I want you to do something. I just want to do something. The next time you got an urge to smoke weed, get it in your hand. And every time you do, yes, say, Lord, thank you that I am the righteousness of God. Got it in your hand. Before you smoke it, just say, I'm the righteousness of God. The Holy Spirit is with me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being if oh, and then go ahead. And if you're gonna smoke, because you ain't gonna give you ain't gonna pass up that good weed no man. Just go ahead and smoke. <laughs> Cost too much, you know. Somebody said, you 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 being funny. No, no, I'm being, I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell you something. When you when you when you believe right, you'll live right. The reason why you got it in your hand, you don't know who you are yet. You don't know who you are, so you listening to the enemy telling you who you are, and yet all you got to do is change and begin to be God inside man, the Holy Ghost inside man, and know who you are. I guarantee you, if you keep saying that every day, the God in you will convict you enough that one day you put it down. How? Because this is a true story that my spiritual father said. 
that somebody was on that and they did that and they start smoking that and then they start saying that and put it down and years have went by. They have totally delivered because the desire was taken away because now they understand who they are. So if you got an issue with weed, you got an issue with, well, not Mad Dog. Y'all don't drink Mad Dog no more. Somebody asked me that, uh, are y'all going to drink uh, during the game? I said, the devil is a liar. No, we're not going to drink. We're going to have fun. We're going to act like we drunk. Amen. Amen. We're at the Mario. We're not drinking. And y'all better not be trying to slip down there around there to that bar either. And I know my people, they'll be around there, you know, I'm going to, going to the room, check on some pastor. No, no, no. Follow him. Goodness and mercy, follow him. <laughs> no, you got to drink. You got to get drunk. You got to drink up before you come, to, come, you come there. <laughs> like some of y'all do. Yeah, yeah. We ain't going to drink. Let's just go get, get, get two sips. You ain't got to get two sips. <laughs> come on. God loves you anyway. But I'm just saying the Holy Spirit is so very important. Under the new covenant, he's in you. He'll never leave you. Thank God you're not under the old covenant. Because the way some of us, including myself, every time we miss it, the Holy Spirit will leave. And you had the bad don't leave. But under the new covenant, he's sealed until the day of redemption. All you got to do is just yield to him. And he'll accept you right where you are and help you get better. It's not a license to sin. He's there to help you come out of your things. I love, the, I love God so much that he loved us enough to never leave us, never forsake us. Say amen to that. Amen. Hey man, let's go to a, another one. Praise God. That one didn't get all, didn't go off too good. Everybody didn't say nothing on that one, but. Hey amen. I ain't gonna mess around with your wine. What's some of the things y'all drank? It ain't mad, dog, but. Mess around, what's the, um. No, you. You used to tell me about them. What, what's the, I know you don't drink, but what's the name of the drinks? Huh? Henderson? Huh? Alexander? Alexander? Alize? Alize? Look at somebody say, oh, oh, Alize. Man, is Alize good? It is. Praise God. I ain't gonna mess up with y'all. <laughs> Let's go to another one. Amen. I love this one. What are we doing? We're, we're, we're looking at things before the cross and after the cross. And if you don't understand that, that's why the power can't flow because we hinder it with our lack of understanding. Amen. Amen. Take the Holy Spirit from me. He ain't never left you. Matter of fact, he brought you here today. Amen. Wait, here's one. I love this. Um, look at Romans, Romans 5 and 10. This is good to know. Romans 5. Romans 5 and 10. We're going to look at being reconciled, reconciliation. Being reconciled before the cross and being reconciled after the cross. In other words, look what it says here. I love this. It says, verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved from his wrath. In other words, what this is saying, it was impossible to, for you to be reconciled before the cross. 
In other words, you were, before the cross, you were enemies of God, deserving wrath. So reconcile means one with God. Reconcile means to restore to a friendly uh, relationship. Back to harmony. So before the cross, everybody before Jesus died could not be reconciled. They were his only enemies of God and deserving wrath. That's what it says right here. Amen. So how many glad that Jesus died? Because just look at after the cross. This is so very important. That's why it's important to know Jesus and believe on him because these things belong to you once you believe on him. Lord have mercy. Look what it says here in um, Colossians 1, 21. Look at that. Colossians 1, 21. Wow. Praise the Lord. Man, I tell you, receive that word today. Remember, dunamis is released through the power of the gospel. I'm telling you right now, man, that is so awesome. We want to encourage you to be doers of your word, of the word, not just hearers only. Listen, also, I want to say this. If, if someone is watching and you don't know the Lord, you know, as your personal savior, uh, just repeat these words. Jesus said, believing on me get you in. Um, so I, repeat it. Say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ. Come on, say it. Son of the living God, I believe you died for me. Rose up on the third day with all power in your hands. Lord, I receive you as Lord and Savior. Do something in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you've said that with the heart, welcome to the family of God. Jesus loves you. And now you're in the body. Um, he said, when you believe on him, you believe unto righteousness. Confession is made unto salvation. That means you're righteous now. You can stand before God without any sin, conscience, or guilt. Wow. We love, we, <coughs> God is so awesome. So go ahead. Let us know you did that. I know you did. So we can send you some free literature information to help you in your Christian walk. And we're going to see you on next week. Uh, keep praying for us. And we will pray for you. God bless you. And see you soon.